Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of Choirs and Cups with your hosts Darkside0895 and Affordable Dreams coming in to kick off the final wrap up for the regular season being week 9 in the AHL on the PSN side. Uh, thanks all you guys coming in. Um, hey Dreams, how you doing buddy? Doing great. I'm, I'm glad to be here again to kick off this final breakdown of the season for us before we talk about all the playoff stuff and playoff hypes. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, and to start you up, guys, off, we're going to go through that final power rankings for the uh, the regular season here. Um, <clears throat> and we'll start getting into some, some playoff breakdowns and some matchups and some predictions. Yeah, and so forth. Uh, this evening, as you notice, we are missing our, our other guest, uh, Conman. Is not here today, but it's all right. He'll be back next week for us to uh, help fill in that role. <laughs> yeah, for but sure. Without any further ado, man, let's, let's, let's get right off of that. Who's not or who's high on forwards here? I'll bust this out with that first top 10 for us. Uh, coming in first overall, on the first star of the week is Kachuk underscore underscore seven from the Rockets. Uh, everyone, uh, not everyone, I'm, I'm lying to myself. 3 0 re record for himself, 22 points, 9 goals, plus 13 in the right wing slot. Coming in second all overall and the second star of the week as well as Seb QC97, 3 0 week, 17 points, 6 goals, plus 12 on the left wing slot. Third overall and our third star, bang, bang in a row. Another Rocket, all Rockets taking the top three and top three of the week. God of Christ, 3 0, 16 points, 8 goals, plus 12 playing that center slot. I want to believe these guys are probably a line. Being uh, standing left wing yeah. and right wing, yeah. But uh, that's just me being, you know, skeptical at this point in time. No vivid proof onto it. Uh, coming in, uh, congrats as well to you guys for the top three stars of the week, as well as top three uh, for the awards of the week as well. Coming in fourth overall from the Charlotte Checkers, we have I twenty seven ninety seven a two and zero week, ten points, six goals, uh, zero on the plus minus on the left wing slot. Uh, fifth. Coming in as Fat Hog Lucente from the Americans. Uh, must be a misprint here. 4 0 week for him. 20 points, 8 mm, goals, plus 15. No, they must have had their, their 10 game. Oh, the 10 game. That's right. That's right. Yeah. The 10th game up here. That's right. That's right. So that's possible. Uh, coming in sixth overall uh, is Fat Hog Celli. Uh, a lot of Fat Hogs are coming in. <coughs> a lot of name changes. Uh, coming in sixth for us, anyways, with a week as well 21 points eight goals plus 15 on the center slot coming in seventh overall for the uh, uh eagles or condors yeah. eagles eagles yeah grammy hands uh three in a week 12 points eight goals plus five on the right wing slot as well eighth overall from the americans coming in is Kesley snipes for 24 oh record 18 points 10 goals plus nine left wing slot ninth overall for the barracudas is far down daily 3-0 record, 13 points, 6 goals, plus 10 on the right wing slot. And last but not least in the top 10 is we have Charlie Balls, MTL, from the Syracuse Crunch. 3-0 week, 13 points, 6 goals, plus 10 on that right wing slot. Looking over the who's not, buddy, who sticks out to you like a sore thumb? Um, I mean, I'll, I don't know if sore thumb's the right word, but I'll point out Ditka Buck was having <laughs> a really solid uh, go of it in the CHL this season. Obviously, uh Coming up here, not having the same level of success with the Stockton Heat in his two ECU games, uh, going with zero points and negative four on the left wing. Uh, Bach Daddy is usually pretty solid yeah, I was as well. Call Bach Daddy myself. Yeah, <laughs> negative eight. You know, zero and three for those Comets who are, are just covered on this list. Um, yeah, outside of that, so I'll let you kind of poke between. The uh, I'll call out one more, which is uh, McLaughlin eighty eight, another CHL guy here coming as. A this week for the Rockets, who took top three in the forwards, but he is here in the uh, who's not for the forwards for them. Uh, uh, all one on one week with the minus one playing center. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but outside of that, I don't see too anything too too crazy going on. No, my, 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 me either. So let's jump on to his defense. But who he got first in the top ten of who's hot? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so taking top spot is uh, the Rochester Americans distracted winning player of the week, uh, going with. Uh, 4-0 with 9 points, 1 goal, plus 13 in the lefty. Uh, coming in number 2, we got the second star of the week, Smooth Sharky. Uh, 3-0, 4 points, plus 7 lefty as well. Uh, number 3, and rounding out the top 3 for those player of the weeks, is the Rampage's Exodus. Uh, putting up a 3-0 week, 7 points, 2 goals, a plus 12, and our first right D on the list. Congrats to these three guys for winning those uh, those awards. Uh, coming in number four, Definitely. we got the Barracuda's Res Homie. 3 0, 6 points, plus 8, and a right D. Uh, number five, we got the Utica Comets Clamps. Sorry, Clamp for Stevens. 
3 and 0, 4 points, plus 3 right D as well. Uh, number 6, another Laval Rocket coming in here. O Solomon Blazon, <clears throat> 3 and 0, 4 points, plus 12 right D. Uh, pretty much the majority of these guys coming in playing on the right side of the ice, eh? Yeah, they are. Yeah, Unlike previous weeks, so a lot of lefties. This week we're seeing the right Ds take over. Yeah, it just seems to kind of, I guess, balance itself out. Uh, coming yep. to number seven, we got uh, the Americans CM Deadly. 3 and 0, 7 points at a plus 12 on the right D. Uh, number eight, we got Phillies MVP of the San Jose Barracuda. Uh, 3 and 0, 5 points, plus 8 left D. Uh, number nine, kick ass eight thousand of the Charlotte Checkers, three and zero, five points, two goals plus eight, also a right D. And last but not not least, I believe he was the owner of the Kansas City Mavericks last season before. I believe so for uh, being removed from the league, but is now with the Grand uh, Rapid Griffins. The Griffins um, going three and zero, two points plus eight on the left D. Congrats to everyone who made that top ten list. Good job and uh, carry it over to the playoffs. That being said, who do you see on the other side that um, you don't expect to see there continuously? You know, I'm going to take a shot at a personal buddy of mine. Raz Cool sitting there at 0-3 for the Texas Stars. Uh, minus 10 lefty. I, I got to call him. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, again, the Stars not having the strongest go of it. Him coming in trying to help out, you know. Not the, yeah, it didn't, it didn't seem to work out either. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, I'll point out a couple guys here. Uh, one being uh, Ultimate Gamer 940 for the the Sound Tigers. Uh, I believe he's having a pretty solid out season outside of this this week specifically. They're in the playoffs. Uh, hopefully, he can kind of get his shit back together after going 0 three and one with the negative ten and, and no points. Um, for sure. Uh, outside of that, I'll, I'll kind of point out Knight Rider 1 for the um, Phantoms. Uh, okay. He was called up mid-ish season from the CHL from those uh, Steelheads. Uh, you know, a bit of a rough go for him. I believe the Phantoms missed the playoffs. Uh, so he gets called up, has a rough week, and kind of ends his season uh, up here without you know much chance at, at anything else. Hopefully he can you know take take the lessons he learned from this season and, and move forward. And move forward, yeah. 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 I have one more too just eat there under MR. Mm. Uh, for that, that that strong province team that's having a tear for the past couple of weeks here. Mm. Uh fight for last playoff spot. You see him coming as the own three week this week, which Yeah. Well and that's and that's for the playoffs, right? He did, um, yeah. They went I believe they went uh three and six to miss the playoffs this this past week. Yeah, so and, and part of that was was obviously Ether and his lines play. Yeah, I mean, three losses there alone doesn't help any, right? So, I mean, uh, that, that's all I got for so man on that category. Yeah, for sure. Do you want to run us down the uh, goalies? We are going to go into the top ten of who's hot for the goaltenders. Coming in number one for the Devils is Mr. Morgan, 31, a 2-0 and week. Uh, 0.46 goals against average, 15 saves, 93.8. They've said average of one shot out. Overall, strong showing uh, in these two games that they played. Coming in... Uh, second and our first star of the week is Enraged Fury, uh, 90, uh, 4 2 and 0, 58 saves, 1 goals against, 90.6 saves, and average in 3 shutouts as well. So, congrats to him for that first star of the week. Uh, third overall coming in is I Just Dub, 1754, 2 and 0 week for the Moose, uh, 19 saves, 1.01 goals against the average, 90.5 saves, and average, and 1 shutout as well for him. Uh, coming in fourth overall is a Savage Pain. From the Sound Tigers, or the Tigers, Sound Tigers, yeah, Sound Tigers. Yep. Uh, record one, one in O, 35 saves, zero point five one GEA, ninety seven point two saves and average, one shutout as well for him. Coming in fifth overall for the Checkers and second star of the week is Immortal uh, BMW, five and O week, fifty nine saves, one point five four goals against average, eighty eight point one saves and average, and zero shutouts. So congrats to you for the second star, Immortal. Uh, coming in sixth overall and third star of the week. Uh, none other than our, our locally owned MD con man, uh, <laughs> five one and oh week, ninety five saves, one point six six GEA, ninety point five saves an average, and zero shutouts as well for him. So congrats for our top three stars of the week coming in there. Uh, seventh is Kudliak, one from the Wolfpack, five one and one, ninety nine saves, one point eight six goals average, eighty six point eight saves an average, and one shutout as well. Eighth overall from the Rampage is New O. New OK Sid, uh, five and O week, fifty two saves, one point six goals against average, eighty six point seven saves and average, and zero shutouts as well for him. Ninth overall for the Rockets, uh, another Rocket coming in for a play. No surprise as how their season played out in the end. Osama been stabbing, 
three in a week, 36 saves, 1.21 goals established, 90 saves in average, and one shutout. And last but not least, we have Gum Thought Real from the Marlies, one in one for the record, one 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 and oh, sorry, 28 saves, 1.5 goals, it's average 90.3 saves and average in one shutter as well. That's our top 10. Congrats to all of you. Who do you see sticking out in the top 10 of who's not that, that may, may be someone to, to look at more deeper? Um, I'll kind of point out two here. So, uh, Bandit 84, um, just kind of getting the short of the stick on this called up halfway through the season, you know, onto a bit of a losing team. It's, been a, it's a bit of a rough break there. A bit of the, rough team, yeah. yeah. the other one I want to point out is I'm not sure if he changed his gamer tag, if uh, the Ice Hog there is actually Yagmir. If it's not, congrats to Yagmir for getting off this list after like four straight right. weeks of me calling you out. <laughs> Unless you changed your name, in which case you haven't fooled me. <laughs> um, yeah, right, exactly, exactly. Uh, one more I want to call it is the course 40. 0 and 5 yeah. 3, 6.2 goals against average, 4.8 saves. And I know only better than that. Yeah. So it, it's it's rough to see him on an 0 and 5 week and that many goals against, uh, yeah. considering the caliber goal that he can be. Exactly, exactly. Um, but uh, that's all I got, man. Yeah, for sure. So that's our top 10 of defense, goalies, and forwards. Let's look at these top 10 power rankings before we jump into any of the playoff breakdowns and, and predictions. Uh, you want to bust off of the first five, buddy? Um, yeah, for sure. So coming in, uh, taking top spot here, we got the San, San Antonio Rampage uh, going 9-0. and with 41 goals for, 17 against for a plus 24 and a plus 33 shot differential. 30% on the power play, six only 66.7 on the PK. Um, something they need to... Like a little higher in that category. Yeah, something they got to work on, um, you know, pre-playoffs. Um, negative three on the face-offs, so pretty even there. And plus 25, 47 on the time on attack is really solid. So it's showing the face-offs <laughs> losing doesn't mean... The, the re- no, I mean, yeah, again, and being, you know, about about even anyway, right? It's not a, yeah. it's, it's a 50-50 draw, right? Um, and jumping up from 12th to 1st, so having a, a good climb after uh, not as strong a week uh, 8. Uh, yes. Coming to number 2, we got the Americans who've been up here pretty much all season long, going 7-2, and two, 44 goals for, 20 against, plus 24 on the differential for goals, plus 54 shot differential, uh, 27.8 on the power play, 85 on the PK, plus 61 on the faceoffs, 27-18 on the time on attack differential, which I believe was best in the top 10 at least. Um, dropping from first to second, but I mean, not exactly a, a huge drop. They're still no. looking pretty solid, and I believe they won the... Um, the President's Trophy, as it were. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, coming to number three here, we got the Charlotte Checkers, 8-1, eight, eight and one, 39 goals for, 21 goals against, plus 18 goal differential. Uh, exactly even on the shot differential, which is strange to see. Um, 35% on the power play, which is very solid. Uh, 72.7, a little bit weaker on the PK. Uh, plus 9 on the faceoffs, and a positive 14.02 on the time on attack. Jumping up from 11 to 3rd, so again, another pretty solid climb Lady here. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming to number 4 here, we uh, we got the uh, San Jose Barracuda going 6-2-1 and one with 41 goals, 4, 22 against, and a plus 19 on the differential, plus 59 on the shot differential, 20% on the power play, 100% on the PK, which is obviously impressive. Uh, Definitely. Plus 41 on the face-offs, plus 17-19 on time on attack differential, making a nice big climb from 16th to 4th. Very good claim. Uh, and uh, coming in number five is the Wilkesbury Scranton Penguins going seven two and one. 36 goals for 21 against plus 15 differential on the goals plus shot t- uh, plus 30 on the shot differential. 40.9 on the uh, power play is absolutely killer. Right. Um, and 80 81 percent on the the penalty kills obviously not as dominant but still a pretty solid number to have out there 87 is pretty all right well, 81 yes 81. it's still not horrible yeah. no it's it's about where you want to be um yeah. plus 10 on the the face-offs and a positive 15 27 on the time on attack differential jumping up from ninth to fifth so maintaining their pretty solid pace yeah, I believe they've been top 10 almost every week. I do, if yeah. I have recall. I haven't seen really falter out of that. Uh, so let, that's our top five. Congrats to you, top five guys, taking that. I'll go straight to the top uh, 10 here, last the last five. Coming in six overall is the Rockets, the 6-2-2 two, two week. 35 goals for 18 against a plus 17 in the differential yeah. for goals. A plus 66 in shot differential, 19% in the power play, and an 87.5 in the PK. A very, very strong PK. Uh, plus 15 on the faceoffs, 21-31 on the TOA. 
and playing from 14th to 6th this week. Um, I, I'm going to follow up with what you said before. The 27th in the American time attack is top in the top 10, but there is one just outside the border in the 12th spot, 28. It was a little better in that category, which is the deficit. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I just want to point that out. You will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seventh overall coming is the Griffins, the 5 2 in one week. 25 goals for, 18 goals against, a plus 17 goal differential, plus 66 differential in the shots, 19% in the power play. Let's see a little bit higher to that. Uh, PK is 87.5, very, very strong. Oh, oh, sorry, 95, sorry, 95. Sorry, I read the Rockets, that one there. 95% uh, percent of the PK, which is dominant. I yeah, mean, that, sure. that's, 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 that's shut down PK. Uh, plus 14 on the shot, uh, face, up, face up the differential and a 913 on the TOA coming from 17th to 7th this week. So another nice 10 spot jump for them uh, coming into the last week of the season. Uh, coming in 8th for this week is the Wolfpack with 7-2-1 and one record, 30 goals for, 21 goals against, plus 9 goal differential, plus 48 in the shot differential, 31% in the power play, which is nice, and a 75% K. Okay. Could be a little higher. It's not horrible, uh, but still... I would like to see what that 80% wise if possible. Uh, maybe they can pick that up in playoffs. 17 to the positive on face-offs and 7.5 on the TOA, falling from 4th to 8th this week. So still in the top 10 for two weeks in a row, two two strong weeks out of them. Always good to see in the closing weeks of the season. Ninth this week is the Thunderbirds, also 7-2-1 mm-hmm. this week. 31 goals, 4-21 against a plus 10 in the goal differential, minus 10 in the shot differential. A horrible 11.8 power play that yeah. doesn't help you when you're not scoring the power play. You got you got to produce. Uh, PK 85%, which is nice. Minus five in the faceoffs and a negative 12 13 on the TOA. You got to keep that puck out of your zone more. Uh, but coming from 20th to 9th this week, so nice climb. It is, yeah, and, and unfortunately, just not quite enough with uh, Con Man and the Thunderbirds uh, not getting a chance to play in the playoffs and. Uh... You wonder if uh, if Con Man wasn't able to make the show today because he's still uh, licking his wounds from missing, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> quite possible. A tenth overall coming this week with a four three and old record, twenty eight goals for, nineteen goals against. Oh, sorry, it's the Condors. Jeez, uh, plus nine goal differential, plus fifty two in the shot differential, twenty nine point four the power play percentage, fifty eight point five in the PK. Ouch. Uh, minus 10 in the face-offs, minus 349 in the TOA, and coming 23rd to 10th this week. That PK at 50, 58%. Yeah, it's got to kill you. Yeah, you got to pick that up and be a little stronger. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's going to hurt you a lot. That or stay in the box more often. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, but that's but, our top 10, man. Yeah, big shout-out to the guys who made the top 10. Um, unfortunately, not all these guys were able to make the playoffs, but for those of you who did... I think it was just the Thunderbirds in the top ten that didn't make it, but um, you know, good luck out there in the in the first round. And we're gonna drag you guys on over to the uh, first breakdown of our series, which is the Penguins versus the Hartford the Wolfpack. Wolfpack. Yes. You want to start us off that one? Yeah. So uh, this series, uh, while I believe the Penguins are actually the higher seeded team, and the the Wolfpack kind of went on a bit of a tear near the end of the season to, to get in there, uh, unseating a few teams in that really tight division. Uh, actually led this season series between them and the Penguins uh, three to one, winning their first meeting three nothing, the second one four to two, losing their second game four three, and winning their final matchup two to one. Um, <clears throat> really nice thing to come against a strong team and do that kind of stuff. And close yeah. out on the last game of the season with them as well. For um, sure, for sure. And you wonder if you know all the same lineups will be used if some guys got maybe moved or whatnot, but. You know, if it's a similar lineup matchup, it, it could be uh, home ice advantage might not necessarily favor the Penguins in this. Could series. this be the Tampa Bay Lightning of the of the LGHL or LGHL? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so the the series producing twelve goals for the, for the Wolfpack, is seven for the Penguins, uh, seventy five to sixty one in favor of the Wolfpack, uh, fifty seven to fifty three also in favor of the Wolfpack. Time on attack pretty damn close, twenty nine sixteen to thirty fifty seven for the Penguins. That is really tight over four games. Yeah, 48% to 51% in the TOA. It's pretty close. That's, yeah, that's, that's really close. Uh, and then penalty minutes, both a little bit undisciplined. Uh, the Wolfpack taking 26 penalty minutes and the Penguins taking 29. Uh, however, both pretty ineffectual when it comes to scoring on that power play. Uh, two for 14 for the Wolfpack, two for 11 for those Penguins. Uh, and faceoffs <clears throat> favoring the Penguins 70 to 56, and the Penguins scoring the only shorthanded, shorthanded. goal of the series. Um, 
Now, with the line matchups, it looks as though the Penguins are heavily, heavily favored based on the site's recognition, but obviously there's more intangibles that go into it. Um, one noteworthy guy, a couple noteworthy guys I want to point out um, on this on this list here. Uh, Beaver Klopp's a really, really solid forward. Okay, yeah, 100%. Um, and coming in the series with five points in two games, winning them both. Um, you've got... Greasy like butter. Yeah, greasy like butter, another really solid forward, only playing the one game. Um, Kurt uh, L88L is another really solid player I look to... Uh, see winning a few games in the series for sure. A greasy like butter played the two games, by the way. It was greasy like cheddar. Oh, sorry, yeah, I read the wrong greasy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I believe uh, Sebascod was. Um, is he not in the CHL for the Cyclones, or did he get called up? Who's that, sir? Seba? I think he may have been ECU. I Maybe, think he yeah. Called. He might have. He might not have. Still. He's there, none the doubt. For sure. Nonetheless. And then on the other side, you know, um, Big Pappy Chungus, as he goes by now, is obviously a big a big factor in the series, as is Check Check It, uh, Freezor, uh, some big names on this list, you know, Reader 1515, San the Man, San Crusade. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heavily uh, offensive-powered team with the, the Penguins coming through here. Um, when you so, look at the goalie aspect, though, you, you got a really nice battle there with, with, the, with the Wolfpack having the, the better tandem. Yeah, uh, based on yeah, based on this season series at least, yes, yes. Um, for yeah, sure. Yeah, in this series especially. Yeah, the, the mm-hmm. tandem here between Speedy Dog and, and Kudliak, uh, an eighty-eight point six for Speedy and eighty-eight point five for Kudliak, uh, and a one point five, one point six mm-hmm. GAA really outweighs Doc Marshmallow and, and, and Gatiss mm-hmm. or Gatess, and the eighty-one point three and eighty-eight point nine. Um, yeah. And eighty-eight point nine definitely uh, with with Gatiss being a contender to outreign by that. Per point percentile, right? <laughs> for sure, for sure. And do you think he doesn't hold up to anything? And do you think the fact that McDonald predicted this series to be uh, heart for Wolfpack and Six has any bearing on this? Do you think you know, <laughs> being that he he runs a good chunk of this league, that could affect how the outcome of the the series goes? Or <laughs> uh, it's possible. It's possible. I mean, uh, I I'm I'm uh, almost liking to take the Wolfpack myself in okay. this category. I am. Um, um, I, I just can't bet against this uh, Penguins team. I think the that's Wolf- where my issue comes in. They're so dominant. Yeah, no, so I think dominant. I think part of it for me too is the fact that uh, the Wolfpack have used a larger amount of their players against this team, which could either favor them in the sense that they're used to playing this team, or it could hurt them because it's given the Penguins a scouting report. But either way, I think it's going to be a tight series, and I think it's going to be in six for the Penguins. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm going to go with your theory a little bit here with the players played. I mean, the Penguins definitely did not throw out more than one, maybe maybe, maybe two lines against them, yeah. where, where, where the Wolves have played their three. So they haven't faced that third line yet, which could play a huge factory. And are they prepared for the third line? Can they handle them? Can it? You know, they, they haven't done it. They have no experience against it. So that could play a huge factor. Um, but I'm still going to stick with, with, with my original theory. I'm going to say the goaltenders in this game uh, come out and, and, and do their job and, and steal, steal an upset here. And they're going to do it in six as well. Okay. Okay. Right on. <laughs> All right. So that's our, uh, our prediction for the uh, the first series in the East. Uh, our next one coming up here, we got the Bridgeport Sound Tigers versus the Charlotte Checkers. Do you want to run us through that? We'll, we'll bust it out. Checkers leading this series at three games to one over the Sound Tigers. Again, I believe the Checkers and Sound Tigers had a really good battle for quite a while mm-hmm. uh, throughout the season. So the Checkers taking the boatload here right now, winning the first game 3 nothing, losing 1 nothing in the second game, winning 5-2 in the third game, and winning again 3-2 to two in the final game. So you see, uh, you know, two out of the four uh, really close games. Yeah. Battles. Uh, so I expect to see that happening here again. I'm... I, the series lead by them being three to one, I think, is not going to be relevant coming into the series. I expect to see a long, but let's go on the stats about that. We'll get to that prediction in a little bit here. Uh, goals coming in 11 goals for the checkers to five for the Sound Tigers, shots 62 to 57 favoring the checkers as well, hits 52 to 32 also favoring the checkers. Time attack 30 minutes and 19 seconds to 26 minutes even for the checkers in the lead as well. Penalty minutes 22 to 20, checkers also lead in that category. Power play. Two for ten for the Sound Tigers and three for nine for the Checkers. So I mean, really good percentages on those power plays. Um, more so, I mean, Checkers are what? They're just shy of thirty percent. Thirty-three. Uh, no, it's uh, thirty-three point three. 
There we go. Yeah, so a little bit higher. So yeah, 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 a little bit higher. So I mean, they got that edge there as well. Taste sauce fifty-five to forty-one for the checkers, and also the one short hundred gold coming in for the checkers as well. If you look at that line matchups, you see everything but the one goalie. That goalie line one has the edge for the mm-hmm. for the sound time. Besides that, it's all checkers. But that means nothing uh, coming into these playoffs at this point in time. A couple guys to maybe look at here on the sound tigers. Uh, I'm gonna be digging. I'm gonna be digging here a little bit. Um, I'm gonna throw some names out real quick here. Um, Scanny Boy, uh, I'm yeah. gonna call him out. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a, been known to be a really solid player and to be very, very capitalistic. So I, I expect to see him turn on and play offs here coming in. Uh, Peepo patches as well. I think will turn up his defensive game and pick it up coming into playoffs. Who? Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, Milakilla, uh, really solid defenseman on the back end for these guys. Um, on top of that, um, having one guy not, I don't think he played a game yet or he's changed his name since, uh, Rings LX, who I believe is their AGM, if I'm not mistaken. Um, another really solid forward on this team, uh, Ultimate Gamer, pretty solid D-man back there. So again, they have, they have some talent, uh, but then, you know, you look over on the, the checkers side. Like, I mean, you, you have Bo is coming in with you know, mm-hmm. two games, six points. I mean, and he's been a f- fantastic player for most of his career in, in, in the uh, the LG League. Uh, you know, you got Kev Bout, draft pick from last season, showing why he was draft picked and, and doing his job right here with the checkers. You also got uh, Mike Noddy playing defense back there, a new acquirement for them at the deadline uh, coming over to here, uh, showing why they went and got him with his, you know, 2 0 record against the team. Yeah, for sure. Um, and again, I don't know if I want to count out. <clears throat> Um, Boogs, who, like you mentioned, you know, um, he won the Calder Cup last season, right? Uh, he knows how, right. To, how to get there. He knows how to win. This is a really solid team. You know, you see the the good mix of veterans and um, draft picks mixed in here. I, uh, personally, I think it's going to be a little too much for the Sound Tigers to handle. I mean, look at the goaltender aspect alone. I mean, heavily favored on the goals yeah. inside on the checkers with immortal and, and mr bang bang 95.7 in the same same category and bang bang uh, had a really really strong regular season uh, across the board he not did he did i mean two games against this series alone uh half a goal against him yeah right i mean uh phenomenal phenomenal so within saying that uh, my prediction is this one going to be a deep series it's, it's not going to be a sweep mm-hmm. i think the sound tags are going to fight back but I think the checkers again take us in six. Yeah, I'll say checkers in five. That's where there I'm we at. Go. There we go. So there's your breakdown for game number two of round number one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on to the uh, the next Americans Eastern and monsters. final. Yes, the Americans versus uh, the monsters here. Uh, series actually going two and two. First game going to the Monsters, two to one, one nothing to the Americans, three to two for the Americans, and finally two to one for the Monsters. A really, really tight series. Uh, Very goals close. evenly split, six aside. Uh, shots fifty two for the Monsters, forty six for the Americans. Um, fifty to thirty six in favor of the Monsters for hits. Time on attack was twenty nine in favor of the Americans over twenty fifty one for the Monsters. Penalty minutes nineteen to fifteen. Actually, pretty low on the Pims for for four game series. Um, that being said, the Monsters being unable to score on their six chances, and the Americans capitalizing on one of their five. Um, faceoffs favoring the Americans forty seven to thirty six. And no shorthanded goals recorded in this series. Um, again, you see the the line matchups. It looks as though the Americans are heavily favored. Uh, that being said, I believe they had the highest number of points by any team in the regular season this season. Um, so, <clears throat> I mean, you know, it's hard to not favor them in this series. Uh, that Definitely. being said, on the American side, you look at someone like AQC, a uh, pretty solid player in his own right. Uh, DeGraves has been around a really long time, has that experience. Um, Ellis Piccoli, 420, uh, defenseman. I played with him in season four, World Juniors. Uh, I believe he was a, uh, a draft pick and a pretty solid D-man. Uh, it's me, Mario Morn yes. getting traded here. Yeah, call him out. Um, Morn, the yeah, yeah. guy. Uh, T. Roach, uh, you know, the Canadian's a huge, huge uh, factor in this game for... Um, uh, the goaltender side. Well, just on the question. Yeah, that's and that's the big question when you start looking and seeing. You know, you got Keegan Mambo, you've got uh, Notorious, Notorious you've got Lucente, <laughs> you've got Chell Ledge, and like you've got a, a a litany of solid point producing guys at the Julian as well. I mean, uh, the yeah. man in net 
Yeah, um, I, I, honestly, you know, when you... Black can, Paladin. Yeah, <laughs> again, that's the thing. They're really solid top to bottom from forward to defense to goalie. I mean, they've built this team looking for a championship. Uh, for the Monsters to have a chance, they really got to rely on their goaltender quite heavily and, and hope they can weather the storm and, and kind of counterpunch when they get the chances. Definitely. Um, uh, I mean, look at the goaltenders again. You look at that alone. Like, like left bench was a recent call up for them. Uh, mm. The Birdman, who's been there all season, and a TC also, uh, and rather Geekal, uh, mm. all showing phenomenal percentages. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, but uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to push this one a little tighter. I mean, I think this season series suggests it should be a little closer. Uh, I'm going to say Americans in six, where I think a lot of people were expecting a sweep out of the series based on their regular season uh, standings. I'm actually going to agree with that sweep and say the Americans just take this, take it to the hole. They're, they're going to turn it on. They're, they're going to put the pressure on, and they're going to they're going to take them home. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Um, and moving on to our Let's last East matchup is the Devils versus the, the Rockets. Rockets. Another another tight series here, two and two apiece. Uh, been a hard battle looks like for these guys. Uh, coming up first, the Devils winning three nothing. Rockets winning four to three in the second game. Rockets winning again two to one in the third game, and then losing four to two to the Devils in the final game of the season for these guys. Uh, so another close battle coming in. Like I said, uh, goals eleven to eight for the Devils. Shots sixty six to sixty two for the Devils. Uh, hits fifty four to thirty two for the Rockets. Time attack pretty close. Five minute differential here. Twenty nine oh three for the Devils to twenty thirty one for the Rockets. Penalty made sixteen for the Rockets. Eighteen for the Devils. Power plays both not doing great here. Zero for seven for the Rockets and one for eight for the Devils. They need to pick that power play up in the playoffs to really make a factor in this series. Um, if they don't do it. I don't know. It's going to be state. I think it'll stay tight. If someone can pick up the power play, they're going to start winning the games and capitalizing the series. That's the way I look at that one. Faceoffs almost even, fifty to forty-eight for the Rockets, with a one short of goal coming from the Devils. Yeah. Again, looking at the line matchups, you see one line, which is the third line coming out of the Devils, that potentially has the edge. Besides that, it's all going over to the Rockets. But let's move forward here. Look at the Devils coming in. I mean, they have some good players sitting here, like Alt Might's playing left wing there. Uh, two games, seven points. Crash Man coming in with two uh, games as well, four points. Uh, you know, Philly's uh, Philly, Zed Philly 12 coming in for lefty. I know these guys can all be great players and great pickups. Mm. Pixel Paul, another great defenseman. Passed on my nose. I mean, user pick, strong team. And none of that. we, we got to mention it. We have to. Elge McDonald sitting there. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's the big question. Can they carry him? Right? Can they can they put the backpacks on? Right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, no, and again, this is a series where you, it's a, you see a lot of really solid talent. Um, I mean, on the the Rocket side, you see Enbo coming in there, uh, getting that call up uh, about halfway through the season as a draft pick. Yep. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Leo Rambo. Yeah. Um, you know, Nestor, both of the Osamas coming in there, having solid seasons. Pa, who's uh, done nothing but build really solid teams uh, at the AHL and CHL level. And the CHL career. levels, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so again, you know, it's it's not uh, it's not going to be. I don't think a sweep for either one. I don't think any way in hell. I think it's going to be a claw and bite kind of series. I think it goes to this. It goes seven. I think. For who? Ah, uh, I'm going to give the Devils. My boy Philly is there. I'm giving the Devils. All right. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll take the Rocket. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to take it in seven. There we go. We got we got our first split decision. <laughs> our first seven split, anyway. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, moving on to the uh, West Side breakdowns. Now we're coming in with the Iowa Wild and the San Antonio Rampage here. Uh, the series going three to one in favor of the Rampage, losing the first tilt though to the Wild four to one, and then winning the, the following three four to three five to one and four to one. Slowly kind of picking up that pace and, and figuring them out and playing a little better against them. Uh, goals 14 to 9 in favor of the Rampage. Shots 73 to 45 for the Rampage. Uh, 47 to 43. It's so pretty tight on hits for the Wild. Uh, time on attack 29 58 to 18 41. So a considerable gap in between the two of those guys uh, favoring the Rampage again. Um, Wild taking more penalty minutes going and taking 30 to the 22. The Rampage took. The Wild could not score on a single chance uh, out of six and four out of nine, which is a really solid percentage for That's the Rampage. Dominant. Yeah, damn near 50% <laughs> there, right? Um, the faceoffs favoring the Wild 54 to 43. Uh, no shorthanded goals in the series. On paper, this looks like a really lopsided matchup with the Rampage uh, coming in here. Uh, and like you said, you know, with the line matchups, only one goalie. 
um, the starting goalie for the Wild outpacing the starting goalie for the Rampage, at least on paper. Um, Definitely. Looking at some interesting names on the on each side, uh, you've got uh, Nibbling Walrus, who I'm not even sure is on their roster. Maybe he is. Uh, I know for sure Damon7302 is not... Um, not recognize a lot of guys on the wild side. We haven't played honest. a lot against guys. There's like one no. line, maybe one and a half lines have come out and played against these guys. Yeah, with some ECUs mixed up, in. Throw in a little more them. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, you see Jarrett and King Formless coming in here. Uh, Lunchbox, Hero, uh, Zogood. Mo most of their, their lines have played in these games. Basically McDavid coming in. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, and and I, I, I gotta say, you're based on David, not good enough, man. You have to be just as good as him. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you scroll down and look at the the goalie matchups, and I mean, um, it, it it fairly heavily favors the the Rampage. Um, yeah, I think this is their series to lose. I think they take it in five. I think new uh, new OK OK Sid there has been it for uh, for a few seasons. So I mean, it's not a new ride for him. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. He might have been he might have been a Barracuda before, but I think he's been here for most of his ride. Um, Again, don't quote if I'm wrong, just yell at me. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <coughs> what do you think uh, of your uh, prediction? You know, I'm going to go with the Rampage. I'm going to take my life. I think the, the Wild do sneak one out, but I think they, they close out pretty easily. Yeah, I agree. All right. Let's... All right, well, let's keep on trucking. Going on to our next uh, breakdown here from the Griffins and the Admirals. Griffins leading the series win three games to one. Winning the first game five to two, winning one nothing, winning eight to one, and then losing three to two. So you see a couple onslaughts by them, mm. but two close games where they barely won with the one goal, they they lost by one. Right, so that that might play a factor coming in. We'll see. Uh, but looking at the stat wise here in goal differentials, uh, sixteen to six for the Griffins, shots sixty four thirty six for the Griffins, hits fifty one to thirty six for the Griffins, time attack thirty oh seven to twenty two thirty three for the Griffins, penalty minutes dead even at eight. But the Griffins showing a slight edge by scoring one out of four compared to uh, own three mm -hmm. for the Admirals. Um, face offs fifty six to forty again for the Griffins, and there's no shorthanded goals, nothing like that just coming out. You look at the uh, line matchups on paper, you're seeing a nice spread. You're seeing the, the mm. Griffins win the offense, you know, but but yet the Admirals win the defense aspect, and then each goaltender taking uh, a, 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 an edge on paper. So we'll look at that going to stats and keep that in mind. You know, put a pin in that for a minute. Uh, come out here, we got Bearcat Gaming. You know, he's coming with one game playing you know, three goals. Uh, Sostakov, two game seven. Super guy, you know, one and eight. So, some big names right there alone that are just producing mm -hmm. against, the, against, against the Admirals here. Um, looking down at the Admirals here, you got St. Louis Stash for the goaltender. You got to call him out. Uh, who else do you see here? A uh, big truck right D. I think he was. was yeah, big, big T Buck. Yeah, he was, I believe, for a short period of time. And he signed up late and got assigned actually to my TC and then got called up a little bit later on in the season. Um, <clears throat> Pazdemic, Pazdemic, obviously. Yeah, obviously, yeah. A really solid guy down down for them. Uh, the Bobby Orr 4 having a, pr a pretty decent year. Um, the big thing I think worthy of note going into this series is those Griffins are coming on a, uh, off, off of a hot streak. Uh, They've been doing really, really, really strong. So, uh, yeah. Cardinals. And they ride that pony into the playoffs. Yeah, Cardinal said coming in, he was one of the top 10 um, D men of the week. Um, you know, they're hoping to ride this hot streak and use the momentum, whereas the Milwaukee Admirals have struggled against this team specifically. Didn't have an awful finish to the, the regular season, but weren't anything worthy of note. Um, so it's going to be an interesting, an interesting series for sure. I don't think the Admirals walk away with this one. I think the uh, Griffins do it in six. I'm going to have to agree with you that they take it in six. And uh, I just don't see enough there. Like, even, even looking at the goaltenders, you look at any matchup from, from, their, from their best save to their worst save, mm -hmm. and it's going to take that category as well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. So let's, let's move on to our uh, third round. Third game of the first round of the West. Yeah. Uh, coming in here with the uh, Stockton Heat and the San Antonio uh, – sorry, the San Jose Barracuda, rather. Uh, yes, <clears throat> played five times, and it was a five-game sweep for the uh, Barracuda, winning 6-3, 8-6, 4-3, 4-1, 7-3. Um, the goals 29-16 in favor of the Cuda. Uh, shots being 95-59 to in favor of the Barracuda. Hits 84-80 to in their favor. 
Time on attack, 39-30 to 29-40 in their favor. Uh, penalty man is taking two more than the Heat with 18 uh, to their 16. Uh, scoring three out of eight were the Barracuda and two out of nine for Stockton, so a little bit better for the Barracuda on the power play. Uh, and the PK, obviously. Um, Face-off, uh, 74 for the Heat, 64, 68 rather, sorry, the for the Barracuda. And shorthanded goals, only one, and it was for the Barracuda. Um, across the board, the stats look pretty intimidating in favor of the Barracuda. The line matchups have it set where they're handedly better. Um, looking at the, the Stockton Heat's players and, and kind of pointing out some noteworthy guys, you've got King Boyvin, who's uh, a very solid winger. Uh, perfect QC, perfect skills as well. I mean, sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, perfect. Yeah, perfect skills QC. You got coming in here, really solid. Willie Corps is, is is decent as well. Fielded a solid guy. Um, you know, Ducks, 0423 had a pretty solid season. Um, <coughs> so I mean, even even Chang Guido 74 can be pretty good when he's on. Um, so it's not like they they don't lack the the skill to win this a uh, series. I'll say it's just I don't think it's this one. Um, you look at the litany of talented forward and D-men on right. the Barracuda. I mean, the points. <laughs> yeah, even just in the Ebola. series, you know, yeah, coming in here with 13 points in two games, and he's been watching Fancy the... Uh, one in six. He's uh, been watching the show and commenting along, so I'm sure he'll be happy to hear his name. Um, <laughs> Matt, Matt, 19 as well, 3 and 12, right? I mean, points you cannot neglect. I mean, they're showing why this team is so strong, uh, and this is a good reason why. Yeah, um... I think this is a this is a four game sweep. I mean, yeah, sweep. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue that at all with you. That's where I'm at. The only, I guess, biggest note <laughs> here is at least the the goalies in this in this specific series on either side weren't really great. I've not been doing fantastic. No, yet. you've not, got not one really. guy um, sitting above eighty. So I think it's gonna come down to who scores the most. And and, and looking at that, I say it's the, they take the sweep. Yeah, yeah, I think it's I think it's a four nothing sweep. If it goes five, I'll be shocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly. Uh, well, let's, with then saying that, let's go on to the very last section for our very last prediction and breakdown, which is the Condors against the Eagles. Uh, another 2 2 series here. Condors winning the first one 10 to 7, Eagles winning 2 in the second game. Condors again winning 7 0 mm -hmm. in the third, and then losing 4 2 in the final uh, matchup to these guys. So you definitely you see, you do see one hot, really high score, 17 goals for one game. Uh, and then a blowout of seven nothing. Other than that, it was pretty pretty even. Uh, but let's look at that. Break it down better. Condors leading with 21 goals, 15 over the Eagles. Shot 70 to 60 for the Condors over the Eagles. Uh, Pits 43 to 30 for the Eagles over the Condors. Time attack is 27:01 for the Condors over 23:36 for the Eagles. Uh, penalty minutes 10 for the Condors, 13 for the Eagles. Power play percentages a little higher in the Eagles at two out of five compared to the Condors one out of five. Uh, Faceoffs heavily in favor of the Condors at 70 to 21. Uh, 63% to 36% in that, that category. So that could be huge coming in. Nothing else to talk about in stat-wise there. Looking at the breakdowns of the line matches, looks like, you know, offensively, they have a slight, slight edge to the Eagles. Defensively, it's it's you know going towards the, uh, the Condors and goaltending again, going back to the Eagles. Yeah, you look at some sure. players coming here, though throw the Condors. They have not thrown a lot out with the Eagles. They've only played, again, one, maybe one and a half lines. Uh, but Dirty D is coming out two and six. Uh, F-U-Q-T, uh, you know, one game five. Pelly at, at two and eight. Uh, Behe at two and five. And, and, and Spires, one and eight as well uh, for his point production and game plays. So, I mean, those are some phenomenal players to point out in the few they have put out there. Yeah, for sure. Um, another guy I want to throw out, throw out there is uh, Kepler. What up? A pretty solid D man for those Condors. Um, Definitely. Now you look at the other side, and they played a little bit more of a a lineup here. Um, Dufrains, I want to say, is how you pronounce his name. Uh, a I think really so, yeah. solid <laughs> winger down there for the Eagles. Um, you know, Mar Grammy hands. Yeah, Marner's a <clears throat> very solid goalie. Um, Heaters fifteen oh seven's a, a pretty solid D man. Um, but I just I don't see any way the Condors lose this series. I'm sorry, buddy, who, who's messaged in the comments saying Eagle season. <laughs> it is not Eagle season. I promise you. I mean, another guy that I want to call is I pass you score. He's been around for a long time. I think season three he's when he came into the league. Yeah. And uh, I actually uh, brought him into the league somewhat and got on my team in season three. Always been a phenomenal player. Uh, weird seeing when left wing. He's usually a center. 
Uh, but still, he's there. But again, like you said, I don't think the Eagles have enough no. to do it. I think the Condors take this, but I think it's gonna go down to six games. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say five for the Condors. All right, all right. There we go. But I, I, goalie wise, I guess you said Marner out, uh, and really he's he's been a standout goalie all year. He, he he could be a difference factor if he can play above potential and steal one or two games. It could make a more intense and more exciting series. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> sorry, just kind of chuckling at the comments down there. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that's that's pretty much it for our, our playoff breakdowns for for round one of the AHL. Um, and yeah, that pretty much wraps up our show uh, for the for the week. Uh, we'll be back live with you guys again tomorrow, uh, Sunday at 4 p.m. to do some more of the CHL round two breakdown. Some live guests coming on to help us out. Uh, at this point in time, season. though, I want to mention Dark. We, we usually play top plays of the season, mm -hmm. but because we started the AHL so late this season, we don't have enough plays to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So that's something we look forward to next season, where we'll end off with plays of the season. The more videos we can get, helps us make those videos. So the more you guys, uh, you know, send, the more we can partake in that and, and make it better. So that's that. I said, like I said, we normally do it. We're not going to do it because we're not um, But look forward to some special videos made for the playoffs round two yeah for sure for sure but yeah good luck out, out there to everyone and uh you know go out there prove us wrong definitely have a good one guys thanks for joining us good luck in the playoffs and happy easter <laughs>